Hello learners, welcome to this session. The title of the session is Introduction to Embedded System. This is the part of Certificate in Information Technology course CIT 002 Block 4 Unit 1. I am Professor Vivi Subramaniam, Director, School of Computer Information Sciences, Indira Gandhi National Open University. So, before going ahead, let us learn the definition of the embedded system. An embedded system is a combination of computer hardware and software and perhaps additional mechanical or other parts designed to perform a specific function. So, here in this particular system, it consists of the hardware part like the chip that we are talking about, the IC that we are talking about and the embedded software like the firmware, we call it as the firmware, the programs that are being written into any ROM, those are also called as firmware or else in any integrated chip which will be permanently staying in the chip. Those particular programs are called as the firmware. So, the embedded system is nothing but it is a combination of the hardware that is a chip and the programs residing in that particular chip and those are permanent of nature. So, apart from this, it perhaps may contain additional mechanical or other parts also. So, this individually is not a computer or not the full pleasure system. So, it is having a limited functionality and this is designed keeping in mind a specific function. So, this is the definition that we can give for the embedded system. So, taking the examples, the microwave oven that we are using will be having this embedded, sy embedded system inbuilt. Almost every household has one and tens of millions of them are used every day. Frequently an embedded system is a component within some larger system that is what I am talking about. So, this itself is not a system we can consider, but this itself is a uh, uh, like a processor or else a microcontroller you can say, which will be catering to a special function. So, you can define the embedded system in many ways. So, in many textbooks we have several definitions, but ultimately the underlying thing is that it is a chip and the programs residing in the chip. An embedded system can be thought of a computer hardware system having software embedded in it that is one of the definition taken from uh, one textbook. An embedded system can be an independent system or it can be a part of a large system. An embedded system is a microcontroller or microprocessor based system which is designed to perform a specific function. So, in this way we can define the embedded system. So, nowadays the cars, the cars that we are using comes with the embedded chips. Not only one particular system, but it may be having several systems which will be have, uh, looking after individual specific function. So, the, was, the intelligent washing machines that we are using that also comes with the inbuilt embedded systems or else the remote control that we are using for the intelligent TVs. So, those also contains the embedded systems built inside. So, I had given lot many examples here pertaining to the embedded systems like the anti-lock brakes, auto focus camera, Canon, then other uh, Sony and other kinds of uh, cameras nowadays are coming with the embedded systems, inbuilt embedded systems, maybe for image processing, maybe for storage, maybe for other reason. So, automatic teller machines also contains the embedded system, MPEG decoders, you can see there is a long listing, camcorders, pagers, then uh, industrial equipment, teleconferencing televisions, then uh, set-top box. So, the, the, the TV set-top box also comes under, uh, will be having these embedded systems, washers, dryers, disk drives, printers, satellite phones, mobile phones, scanners, whatnot. There are several systems 
but most of the people we are unknowingly using this embedded system. So, you can see the long list going on on your slide. So, these are these all these uh, kinds of devices comes with the embedded system. So, you can see on this slide uh, uh, the like a player Sony player is there, then Blu-ray player is there, cars are there and then Google glasses are there. So, there are even thermostat automatic thermostat is there. So, there are several examples that we can quote uh, for this inbuilt embedded systems. So, coming to the characteristics part, one thing is it is mainly single function in most of the systems that we had seen in the list. The embedded system is inbuilt with single function. Suppose if there are three functions to be catered to, so three different kinds of embedded systems may be possible to insert into the system depending upon the functionality. So, an embedded system usually performs a specialized operation and does the same repeatedly. For example, a pager always functions as a pager. So, the inbuilt embedded program that is there in the pager, it is nothing but it displays some characteristics after the communication is done to that particular pager. The other characteristic that we can talk about is that tightly constrained. All computing systems have constraints on design metrics, but those on an embedded system can be especially tight. So, there would not be any kind of uh, leniency or else any kind of loosely constraints placed in the embedded systems. So, if it is meant for means that will be working uh, as a, spe a specific task and it is tightly constrained. So, design metrics is a measure of implementation features such as its cost, size, power and performance. So, all these four metrics we can consider them as the design metrics and it must be of a size to fit into a single chip, must perform fast enough to process data in real time and consume minimum power to extend battery life. So, most of the things, most of the systems that we are talking about runs on a battery. So, the power consumption is a metric that we have to consider while designing the embedded system. And whenever we select the simple uh, chip IC integrated circuit chip that we are talking about and in order to reset, uh, in order to program that particular chip, we have to see whether that particular chip fits inside the equipment or not. That also is the main metric that we have to consider. And then the processing power that also we have to see whether we have to use only 8 bit or 16 bit or 32 bit whatever the case may be. So, the processing power, the capacity and then the real time uh, response that also one needs to see under the metric. Then let us uh, learn the third characteristic that is the reactive and real time. Many embedded systems must, must continually react to the changes in the system's environment and must compute certain results in a real time without any delay. Part of it we had already studied in the earlier characteristic, but you can see here we, it, ha, it has to respond immediately to the system's environment. So, it, the, the response, the program's response should be immediate, then only it catered to the need of the particular equipment. Example you can see here, consider an example of a car cruise car cruise controller, it continually monitors and reacts to the speed and brake sensors. It is functioning uh, to monitor the speed and the brake sensors. So, a particular embedding, uh, embedded system has been placed in order to monitor the speed and the braking sensors and it must compute acceleration or deacceleration repeatedly within a limited time. A delayed computation can result in failure to the control of the car. So, this chip is a sophisticated and one more thing is it is acting on a real time basis. So, once there is a uh, like a, a thing that needs to be monitored, uh, then immediately whatever the response that it should make immediately it should take and depending upon the responses the automatically the um, meant for the activity will trigger. So, that is the th fourth uh, third characteristic that we have to see. And then all these things are either microprocessor based or else microcontroller based. Let us see the difference of microprocessor and microcontroller in the later on side. So, it should be basing upon either a microprocessor or else a microcontroller. Then it will be having a memory, it must have a memory 
as its software usually embeds in ROM, it does not need any secondary memories in the computer. So, I told you it consists of the read only memory kind of thing, the chip is read only kind of memory where in which the contents that are embedded in the software embedded in that particular ROM will not allow you to change that particular program. Then connected, it must be connected peripherals to connect input and output devices. Then there should be some like uh, some parameters coming inside and those parameters will be monitored depending upon the program that is being uh, fed into that particular uh, uh, embedded system. Then it should reflect to those particular parameters. Hardware and software system. So, software is used for more features and flexibility, hardware is used for performance and the security. So, let us see where we can use this particular embedded system that is the purpose of an embedded system. Each embedded system is designed to serve the purpose of any one or a combination of the following tasks. One may be data collection or else storage part or else some sort of representation and then it may be used for data communication, data processing, monitoring mechanisms, controlling mechanisms. Suppose if we use these particular embedded systems in industrial production control or production control system machines, then these particular things will be controlling the parameters and other kinds of things. Even in uh, like uh, power companies also they will use, power institutes also they will use these kinds of controlling embedded chips. So that whenever there is a kind of abnormal thing happening immediately it triggers to the like a security kind of thing or else uh, some sort of factors wherein which it take a, it, it can lower down or upper uh, like uh, increase the things in the industrial control. So, application specific user interface also can be provided using this embedded systems. So, let us see here there are various components we can talk about whenever we consider an embedded system. So, here the main thing that is the sensors that are needed and then the memory that we are talking about and then the processor either it may be a microprocessor or else it may be a microcontroller. Then a hardwired unit is there, it consists of the application specific logic, the timers, the analog to digital or digital to analog conversion converters you can say and then the actuators that is the triggers and then the output kind of thing. So, these are all things the input parameters come will be censored by the sensors and then the memory is there, processor and then the actuator. So, these are the four essential components that any embedded system will be having. Here you can see the user is uh, sending the inputs, input way, way parameters and then the, this particular thing we can call it as an embedded system environment. So, the whole thing that is placed inside the OL we can call it as the embedded system environment. So, let us see one, of, one by one the component uh, which is uh, the part of the embedded system. First one is the sensor, it is the main essential part where it will be sensing the parameters. So, it measures the physical quantity and converts it into an electrical signal which can be read by the observer or by an ele electronic instrument like the analog to digital converter. So, the sensor whatever the signals that it receives uh, the physical quantity signals and it converts those particular things into the electrical signals and later on there is a converter you can see in the diagram that is the analog to the digital. So, it does that particular converter does whatever the electrical signal that is in the form of uh, analog that will that will be converted into a digital form. So, a sensor shows the measured quantity to the memory. You can see another component that we are talking about is the memory and sensor is continuously storing these measurements quantity to the memory. Next thing is the analog to digital converter. So, an analog to digital converter converts the analog signal sent by the sensor into the digital format. Then comes the part of the processor on ASIC. So, processors process the data to measure the output and stores it into the memory. So, whenever the part the storage part is coming into picture then the little bit of memory whatever that is there that plays the major role. Then comes there is another converter that is called as the digital to analog converter. So, a digital to analog converter the or else you can call that one as the D to A converter converts the digital data fed by the processor to its equivalent analog data. 
So, then the last component we will be talking about is the actuators. So, the actuator compares the output given by the DA, D to A converter to the actual expected output that is stored in it and stores the approved output. So, here it is a kind of thing wherein which the checking is check-in mechanism comes into picture. So, an actuator com is comparing the output given by the D2A converter and whatever that is and it is checking again as the parameter or else the result that is stored inside the chip and then it is doing accordingly whether it is uh, like a proceed whether it is within the limits or beyond the limits. So, those particular things depending upon the like uh, the output it activates. So, let us talk about the processor part. So, the processor is nothing but it is the heart of any embedded system, not only embedded system, but suppose if we talk about any like a computer, laptop, or whatever the case may be, the heart of that particular uh, computing device is the processor part. It is the basic unit that takes inputs and produces an output after processing the data. For an embedded system designer, it is necessary to have the knowledge of both the microprocessor as well as the microcontrollers. So, microprocessor has two essential units as you all know, one is the control unit and other is the execution unit. So, control unit indicates like includes a fetch unit for fetching the instructions from the memory one by one and then the execution in, uh, unit has circuits that implement the instruction pertaining to the data transfer operation and data conversion from one form to the other form. So, the execution unit uh, includes the ALU part also, but suppose if it consists of some logical or arithmetic operations to be done, then this particular executive execution unit consists of the ALU unit and it takes care of that arithmetic and logic calculations and the uh, necessary uh, things. So, a processor runs the cycles of fetch and executes the instructions in the same sequence as they are fetched from the memory. So, you can see the diagram, block diagram of an embedded system uh, uh, written over here and it is not showing the complete uh, like whatever we had talked about the all the components. It, so, this particular diagram we can call it as a embedded system block diagram. So, the whole system is been shown as a block and inside that particular block or else the inside that particular oval whatever you had seen uh, in the earlier slides. So, that is being shown as a green and yellow color block and that yellow color block consists of the embedded system that is nothing but the chip and the programs written on that particular chip. And then you can see the input variables are interacting with the system and depending upon the input variables the like the measurements of the input variables the output uh, variables are being thrown out or else monitored and are being executed. So, you can see one part is the interface part and the other part is linking to the other systems. As we are talking about most of the embedded systems they are part of the larger system. So, when they are part of the larger system, so this particular embedded system may be connected to the other systems also. So, this particular uh, diagram on your uh, uh, monitor is nothing but it is called as the block diagram of the embedded system. So, the embedded system hardware includes elements like the user interface as we had seen, the input output interfaces, display and memory. Generally, an embedded uh, system comprises power supply, then what this particular uh, point is nothing but it talks about the inside part that is the block that we are talking about, the embedded system block that we are talking about. So, it comprises of the power unit, the processor, the memory, the timers, the serial communication ports, system applications, system circuits or else external uh, interface device. So, these particular things comprises of that particular block of uh, embedded system. So, there are uh, uh, like three processors that we can talk about. One is the general pro purpose processor, single purpose processor and then application specific processor. So, general purpose processor is nothing but it is a programmable device used in a variety of applications. So, we can see we, can, we were using this particular uh, general purpose processors in the systems also. So, this is also called as in a microprocessor whatever the computers, laptops, tabs. So, every particular every device uh, the computing device uh, will be having this microprocessor and then the features are nothing but it is program memory 
and general data path with the large register files and general ALU. So, all these things are, cons are, are uh, there in the as the part of the general pro purpose processor. Then coming to the features, it is low time to market and NRE cost and high flexibility. So, let us take an example, there are several things that we can quote Intel processors, Pentium processors or uh, there are several processors which are very much general in nature. So, these particular general processors, general purpose processors, we use it in the computers, laptops, tabs, etc. Then comes the single purpose processor. So, the name itself is saying that it is meant for single use or else single purpose. So, digital circuit designed to execute exactly one program. So, only one program it can execute and also as a co-processor, this is also known as a processor, it is just co-processor and this is just uh, the subordinate of the processor or else you can call it as an accelerator or a peripheral. So, the features are nothing but it contains only the components needed to the execute a single program and then no program memory is available and it is very fast because this is a simple device and it is meant for doing only one particular task or function. So, it is very simple, fast, low power consumption and small in size. And then coming to the third kind of processor that is the application specific processor. So, programmable processor optimized for a particular class of applications having common characteristics. So, this is not considering the complete program, it is considering only the application specific application. So, either controlling of the brakes, controlling of the speed in a car. So, particular specific application it, it will be dealing into. So, it compromise between general purpose and single purpose processors and features being the program memory, optimized data path spe and the special functional units. These are the features of this specific processor and then benefits are some sort of uh, limited flexibility good performance, small in size and lower power consumption. So, these are the benefits of this application specific processor. Here also you can observe the name itself is saying that it is only meant for single function or else single task that is single application only. So, there are several types of embedded systems we can talk about. Some are standalone, some are real time, some are network based, some are mobile embedded systems. So, coming to the standalone embedded systems, these standalone embedded systems do not require a host system like a computer and it works by itself. For example, MP3 player you take, it works by itself. There is nothing to be connected to a main computer and needs to use that MP3 player like the digital camera, video game consoles, microwave ovens and temperature measurement instruments. So, all these particular categories of examples comes under the standalone embedded system. It takes the input from the input ports either analog or a digital and processes it, calculates and converts the data and gives the resulting data through the connected device which either controls, drives or displays the connected devices. So, these are the three functions it will does either it will control, suppose if the programs are meant for controlling it will control. Otherwise, some sort of uh, triggering it should do, then it drives some sort of uh, uh, like uh, a thing to happen and then suppose it is meant for controlling driving and then some needs uh, some sort of a display kind of mechanism, then also it will display to the connected devices. The second kind of embedded system that we can talk about is the real time embedded system. A real time embedded system is defined as a system which can gives a required output in a particular time. So, this is a real time response that we are talking about. These types of embedded systems follow the time deadlines for completion of a task. Suppose if something the response is not as per that like immediate like, like uh, in the form of immediate, then they then there may be a haphazard may happen. So, real time embedded systems are classified into two. One is the soft real time uh, systems and the second thing is the hard real time systems. So, the third category is the network embedded systems. So, these types of embedded systems are related to a network to access the resources. The connection network can be a LAN, WAN or the internet. 
the connection can be any wired or wireless. So, whenever we talk about this network embedded system, the thing that strikes immediately, the example that will strikes is the wireless router. So, that will come under the network, so that particular router will consist of a network embedded system. This type of embedded system is the fastest growing area in embedded system applications. So, maybe these particular things are being used in the internet of things or internet of everything also. So, these are nowadays the major uh, like fast growing area is the network embedded systems. The embedded web server is a type of system wherein all the embedded devices are connected to a web server and accessed and controlled by a web browser. So, example we can quote here is LAN network embedded system, a home security system also can be the second thing wherein all sensors are connected and run on the protocol called as the TCP IP. Then we, the fourth category we can talk about is the mobile embedded system. So, the mobile embedded systems are used in portable embedded devices like cell phones, mobiles, digital cameras, mp3 players and PDS. The basic limitation of these devices is the other resources and limitation of the memory. So, you can see there are uh, one or two examples that I want to show. A car is integrated with control, communication and information system. So, here one chip, one embedded system is taking care of the gearbox controls. The other information is taking care of the information. The third embedded system you can talk about the climate control and depending upon the climate inside the car, the AC air conditioning may on, may set to certain limits or may off. So, for that reason also we can use a simple embedded system in the motor car and then a motor control may be placed and ABS braking systems. So, all these things just for example, uh, here we had shown some 3 to 5 uh, embedded systems that are inbuilt into a car. And then this other example we can quote is a simple micro like uh, electronic system or consumer electronic systems like uh, the digital camera, home electronics or else the washing machines that we use or else the security like devices. Uh, uh, security locking devices that is showed on the uh, screen and it will be having some sort of simple interface, the processor which is inbuilt, the sensors which will be sensing the parameters or else the input uh, 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 matrix and then there may be some sort of actuators which will uh, take care of the response part. Then there are certain industrial production systems, I had shown some figure, figure over here which is taking care of uh, the industrial production uh, control kind of thing and the embedded chip is inside the production system you can see. And then another say example we can see are the information systems uh, like the wireless communication, mobile phone, wireless LAN, end to end user uh, equipments ro uh, like wireless routers. So, all these comes under the embedded systems that too in the information uh, category, information system category. Before concluding this particular session, uh, let us recap. Uh, we had started with the definition of the embedded system, we had seen the applications and what are the devices which comes and which have these embedded systems uh, inside their uh, like uh, the instrument that we had seen and then we had seen different types of uh, components that constitutes the embedded system and then we had seen the categories of microprocessors and then at last we had uh, like seen the examples where in which these embedded systems are used. With this I uh, will conclude the session, thank you, happy learning.